So now that we discussed the aldol condensation reaction under basic as well as acidic conditions, let's take a look at a special case of our aldol condensation reaction known as the intramolecular aldol condensation reaction. Basically, an aldol condensation in which the entire reaction takes place within that particular carbonyl molecule. So, ketones are carbonyls that can undergo intramolecular condensation reactions as long as the product that is formed isn't too strained. So as with regular condensations, for basic conditions, the aldol is the final product, but for acidic conditions, we form the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone under our dehydration reaction in which the uh, aldol basically dehydrates into the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. So let's begin by first looking at a base catalyzed example that will not take place and then let's do the following acid catalyzed example. So let's suppose we have the following ketone that looks something like this and we add it into a basic solution where the hydroxide acts as our catalyst catalytic base. So basically the following will happen. This hydroxide can take off either this H atom or this H atom. Because we have symmetry, let's suppose this is the H atom that is taken off. So we form the following water as well as this molecule, our enolate. So this is the enolate that basically acts as our nucleophile. Now what happens is there is an intramolecular aldol condensation reaction, an intramolecular reaction when this bond basically rotates and this carbon bond gets close to this carbon bond that contains the lone pair of electrons as a result of that rotation about this bond, then our reaction can take place and we can form a four-membered ring. So one, two, three, and this bond is the fourth bond. And this product or the intermediate to step number two is shown here. So in the final step, we have this oxygen that bears a negative charge charge and we have to regenerate our catalyst the hydroxide so this water that is formed in step one shown here basically protonates this oxygen forming the following aldol product. So notice that this is our carbonyl group. This is our alpha carbon and the next one is our beta carbon. And to that beta carbon, we have the hydroxy group that is attached. So this is our beta hydroxy ketone, our aldol product. Now in this case, we have a four-membered ring in our aldol product and this will create a lot of strain. So the energy of this molecule will be way too high and the energy of the activation will also be too high. So the rate of this reaction will be very low and no product or very little product will be actually formed. So the four-membered ring is simply too strained for this reaction to actually occur at a considerable rate and produce a good yield of product. However, if we instead had, let's say, five or six bonds, if we had, let's say, a pentane or a hexane ring, then that structure would be stable because a five and six member ring is relatively stable compared to this four membered ring in which the angles are 90 degrees. Now, let's take a look at the following acid catalyzed reaction does, that does take place and let's work out the reaction mechanism of this acid catalyzed reaction. So, we have the following 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 carbons, we have a 10 carbon ring as shown. We have two of our carbonyls. So basically one of these will act as the nucleophile, the other one will act as our base. 
Now, because or our acid. Now, because we're dealing with the acid catalyzed reaction, we have to remember two things. Unlike in this case, where the enolate acts as the nucleophile, the enol will act as the nucleophile in this case. And the enol that is formed will not be the final product. The enol will undergo a dehydration reaction in the presence of the acid and will produce the final product, our alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So let's begin with step one. So in step one, we have the acid. So one of these oxygens is basically protonated. Which one? Well, it doesn't matter. We have symmetry. And so let's say that this is our oxygen that will be protonated by this hydronium here. So we basically have resonance stabilization formed and the product or the intermediate that is formed here is simply the protonated version of this ketone. So let's redraw our molecule. So it looks something like this. Okay, so we have this one that is protonated. So there will be a positive charge on this oxygen. And this one will basically be left alone. Now in the second resonance stabilized step, we basically have this double bond goes on to here so these two electrons can go onto here and the positive charge is moved onto this carbon here. Okay, so we have our hydroxy group, we have our carbonyl group on the bottom, and we have a positive charge that moves onto this carbon here. So we have resonance stabilization. Now, in the next step, we basically want to regenerate our hydronium because we form a water molecule here. So we have our water molecule, let's say it's floating around somewhere here. And this water molecule will basically act to take away this H atom on our alpha carbon position. This is the alpha carbon. And so it will take away our acidic H atom. And what happens is this forms a pi bond here. So the final or not the final product, but the next product at least will be our enol. So this is our protonated carbonyl, but the next product is the enol and it looks something like this. Okay, so we have our OH, we have the double bond here, we have our carbonyl group here. And of course, we form our H O plus, we regenerate this molecule here, uh, which is our acid, and it will also have a positive charge. Okay, so this is our enol, and the enol will basically act as our, this is the enol, and it will act as our nucleophile. Now, the enol is not that good of a nucleophile uh, as, for example, compared to the enolate. So what will happen is the enol will basically react with a molecule. Well, it will react in the intramolecular fashion. And the first step is this has to be protonated. And once this is protonated, this oxygen here, this becomes a very good Lewis acid. And so this pi bond then forms a bond between this alpha carbon and this carbon of the carbonyl. So in the next step, we can basically protonate this oxygen here. So let's protonate that oxygen. Okay, so we have our oxygen here that has been protonated to convert this section into a good Lewis base or a good Lewis acid, I should say. This has a positive charge. And so the pi bond that is found right here basically acts as our nucleophile attacking this carbonyl displacing these two electrons, placing them onto this carbon here. So we form the following molecule. 
Now, you might be asking yourself, where does this H come from? What protonates this H? Well, remember, we have the acid in our solution. So the acid can basically act to protonate this H. So let's suppose we have our H3O+. Actually, we have one right here. So let's say um, this takes this one and we form this as well as water. And because we have water here, we have an H2O here. When we go to this step, in this step, we basically want to, well, let's redraw what this molecule should actually look like. So now we have a bond between this alpha carbon and this bond here. So we have a bond that looks something like this. Um, so we have our OH here. And the OH here will basically form a double bond in the next step because we have a positive charge. When this breaks off and forms a bond here, there's a positive charge on this carbon. And let's not forget our OH here on the bottom. So basically in, this, in the next step, this water molecule that is formed in this step, what happens is this water molecule has to regenerate that hydronium acid. So the water molecule takes away this H and then when this H is taken away, our bond that exists here goes on to here and forms a pi bond between this oxygen. So in the next step, we have the formation of the following molecule. And let's redraw this molecule in a slightly different fashion. So we have something that looks like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have a five member ring here, pentane. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven bonds here. Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we begin here. So we have over here is our OH that is formed here. And this is found, I believe, let's see, this is a bit to so this one. This one goes here. So we have right here is our OH. Okay, so this should be correct. Okay, so this is, be, and, and of course, in this step, we also form our hydronium. So our hydronium is formed because when this water grabs the H away to form this carbonyl, we basically form this hydronium. So this is our aldol. This is our beta hydroxy ketone. So this is the alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon. And to the beta carbon, we have the hydroxy. Now, this isn't the final uh, react or this isn't the final product that is formed. Remember, in the acid catalyzed version, the aldol is just an intermediate. The final product is the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So basically in the, in the next step, we have the hydronium, which acts, so this is our hydronium, which basically then acts to protonate this OH group here. So this is protonated. So let's say we have our two electrons. These two electrons basically grab our H from the hydronium. This is protonated. And so we basically form this molecule with the water group. Then the water group is basically kicked off by an elimination reaction. So let's see what that elimination reaction actually looks like. So let's redraw this molecule. So we have our pentane. We have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So excuse the horrible drawing, but can't get any better than that. Okay, so now we have our uh, water group here. This has a positive charge. And we also have a, we have the last H, the alpha H attached to this alpha carbon. So in the final step, we form a water here. So we have a water molecule floating around here and we want to regenerate our acid. So basically our water molecule gets close to this H, grabs it off of this carbon and this bond is formed between these two carbons, our alpha and beta carbons. And then when this bond is formed, the water molecule, which is a good leaving group, is basically kicked off. And so the final product that is formed is our alpha beta unsaturated 
carbonyl molecule. In this case, it's a ketone. Again, excuse my drawing. Um, okay, so we basically have the following molecules. So this is our alpha, this is our beta carbon, and so we have our unsaturated double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. So this is the final product of the acid catalyzed um, example beginning with the following ketone so we have an intramolecular reaction taking place within this single molecule so once again if instead of using the acid catalyzed we use the base catalyzed the final product would in fact be the aldol but for the acid case the aldol is the intermediate and we go on via a dehydration reaction dehydration simply means we produce water water is kicked off as shown here and we produce this final alpha-beta unsaturated ketone molecule.